When you sign up to be an EPP, extra podcast person to Real Ghost Stories Online, you'll have access to the best ghost stories we've ever told. The oven door started slamming open and closed. And in places like this, oven doors take up entire walls. Never before had I seen such clear evidence of something non-human being in a room with me. Because it felt like somebody was here. You know, you see, I did it written in paint where you just painted. These are stories only EPP members have access to. I don't know why, but I just wonder if that scream isn't a family member that was there to claim their loved one. There was like something standing there right in the threshold of the doorway. And I was paralyzed. I couldn't breathe. It's only $5 a month when you sign up at realghoststoriesonline.com by clicking Become an EPP. There was an old lady standing at the foot of the bed, and she said she could see details and everything. You know, it just looked like an old lady standing at the foot of the bed. You'll get access to the best ghost stories and exclusive video content we've ever created. I have no doubt in my mind that it was completely supernatural. But it felt like it was in my head. Like, it didn't feel like I was hearing it. It felt like it was in my head. Become an EPP now and help keep our show on the air. At realghoststoriesonline.com, click Become an EPP. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802. Or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown, and quite possibly, the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That indeed it is, and the phone number to call in Real Ghost Stories Online and share your real ghost story, 855-853-4802. You can write it on our website, realghoststoriesonline.com, or email us your stories. If you want to record them on your mobile device and send them over to Jenny, J-E-N-N-Y at realghoststoriesonline.com. Those are the three incredibly easy ways to get your stories to us. Or you could record them on a Talkboy, take the cassette from the Talkboy, drop it in a mailbox, and seal it quite well so the magnetic fields from the Postal Service do not erase the cassette tape, and eventually it will get here. Remember that, those days? Yeah, I remember those. Good old cassette tapes. What what, what are you staring at around here? I keep thinking I hear like a phone vibrating. Is it your phone? My phone was vibrating before. Was it vibrating just now again? Well, yeah. It just, yeah. That drives me crazy. I turned it off. But the thing is, when I turn it off, it still vibrates. Yeah. It goes over there, so. Okay. That's all it was. Not an earthquake. All right. Are you thinking it might be an earthquake? No, it's just this like weird pulsating noise in my headset. Wouldn't that be, uh... Interesting if, like, every earthquake was the vibration of, like, a cell phone. <laughs> it's like the earth is vibrating. <laughs> if it was that, you know, finite. Mm-hmm. Not... I don't think we'd ever feel it. No, I, it would just be annoying. you just constantly hear, like, what the hell is that? Oh, it's just the earth. Oh, that's, yeah. yeah that's, that's all it is. That is a very distinct sound, though. Mm-hmm. It's almost more distinct than, like, a ringing mm-hmm. when you he- hear that uh, that noise. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number to share your stories with us. Let's uh, go to our first story today. And uh, here's some ghost stuff. Uh, It's Jessica in Pennsylvania. Hi. Hey, Tony and Jenny. This is Jessica calling from Pennsylvania one more time. Um, I wanted to share a quick story with you. And I probably should have waited because I have a picture that goes along with the story. And I probably should have waited until I found the picture. But I'm the kind of person that once I get it in my head, like, I just need to get it out. So... I'm going to tell you the story, and then when I find the picture, I'm going to send the picture, and I will just, like, reiterate the story then. Um, A few years ago, my husband and I were in Gettysburg. Um, We live about an hour from Gettysburg, and um, we were there for an event, and we took a ghost tour. It was the Jenny Wade house, and then there was... um, I forget what it is now. It's across the street. It used to be an orphanage. I think it's a shop now. And that was part of the tour. So, you know, we're going around and we're just doing our own thing. We're listening to what everybody's saying and we're taking pictures, whatever. So we were leaving uh, the the one that used to be the orphanage. We were leaving the, the, the shop. And... My husband looked over, and there was a room that was roped off. It had a velvet rope 
um, across it. We weren't allowed in there. And my husband looked over there. He looked at me. He said, give me your camera. So I gave him my camera. He snapped a shot, and then we walked on. That was it. No big deal. So the next day, I get home. This is actually, I was still living with my dad, so he wasn't my husband yet. He was my boyfriend. And um, I was looking at the pictures, and I came across that picture and just scrolled past them. And then all of a sudden, I went, wait a minute. And I, and I went back to the picture, looked at it, zoomed in on it, and I'll be damned if he didn't catch a face. Uh, in the door frame and it it looks like a child I mean you can see the face you can see the hair the eyes the nose the mouth even the collar of the shirt and I was just like you have got to be kidding me I showed my dad he saw it I sent the picture to my husband and he saw it I, I couldn't believe it so I know that I have this picture digitally at least I used to if not I'm going to find it because I know I have it and I'm going to scan it and I'm going to send it to you guys because you got to see this it, it's crazy like I couldn't believe it I could not believe it and then I yell at him because I'm like you know I tried to catch things all night and all I got was dust points and you take one picture and you get a face that's not okay <laughs> but it was in Gettysburg and I just and it's like in that moment I remembered that it was an orphanage and I just went oh my god this is nuts I wanted to share that with you. I thought it was crazy. So I'm going to find the picture. I'm going to send it to you in an email, and I will reiterate. You guys are awesome. I love listening to you. Please never change. I love you both so much, okay? And listen, bring the girls to uh, Pennsylvania. I live right outside of Hershey. We'll take them to Hershey Park. It'll be a good time. So um, have a great day, guys, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Then they'd never leave. That's the last thing I need to be around is a park that revolves around chocolate. <laughs> for yourself or the children? More so for myself. Yeah. I think the girls could handle it better than I could. Sometimes they're better at that than we are. Uh-huh. At, like, controlling their candy intake. I mean, there's been so many times it's funny. Because the littlest one, obviously, she seems to ask for it a little bit more. I think she's more of a candy kid. And mm-hmm. the older one seems to like healthier things, mm-hmm. makes better choices. But... Um, it, what's what's funny about it is they both know when like yeah. they stop mm-hmm. it's it's odd it's like you want another piece of candy um no thank you what kid what kid <laughs> does that but uh yes yeah, that would be a, a fun trip to take sometime what do you think about the story well i'm wondering what made her now husband take that picture mm-hmm. you know he just had like a, a feeling or an inkling or did he see something that's what i want to know i want to know what made him know to take a picture at that moment if there was some reason behind it yeah because it's like he saw this room with the rope and kind of paused you know the velvet rope kind of blocking it off kind of paused like something told him to take a picture and i'm just curious if it's because he saw something or he just felt something just yeah just kind of like yeah this feels like something might be that'd be about as good as i would get sure and then i'd have the luck of getting the picture too <laughs> um but i, I understand that because there's a lot of folks who are like that where it's like they sit there they try they try they try and then the one person does it for like the first time and only time and they get mm-hmm. whatever they're going after so i would love to see those photos uh please do send them in that would be fun to uh to take a look at it maybe we could even use them in an upcoming episode of uh of seeing ghosts uh 855-853-4802 is our number let's go to amanda in illinois Hi. My name is Samantha. I'm from Big Rock, Illinois, and I called in before about a dog apparition that I saw in a friend's basement in the same town. Now, the story I have happened to be from the same town, um, which is Big Rock. So, here's the backstory. My father had a twin brother who I had never met before because he passed away from a car accident when he was 19 years old and my father's side of the family, they don't really talk about stuff like that, and I assume that's just how they cope. So, fast forward to me being 19, um, which was about five or so years ago. Um, Anyway, I felt the need to go visit my uncle's gravesite, and I had never been there before. Um, So I was driving down one of the main roads that goes through town, and I was stopped waiting to turn left and um, waiting for the oncoming traffic to go by. And as I was waiting, I felt the need to look up in my rear view mirror and I saw a car coming from behind me 
and they weren't slowing down or anything at all. So I took my foot off the brake and just went forward as opposed to turning. And I thought, well, that was weird, you know, because as I started going, I heard them slam down their brakes. So I just shook it off. Weirder things have happened. So I just turned around and, you know, proceeded to go the way I had intended to before. So once they parked my car, I walked into the cemetery and I, you know, I didn't know where my uncle was buried. So I walked all the way to the back of the cemetery and turned around. So all I saw was the backs of all the headstones, so I didn't know whose name was who um, on whichever one. Um, so there was one in the middle of the cemetery that had caught my eye, and I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to walk over to it and see whose it is. And it happened to me, my Uncle John's headstone, and I just thought, wow, you know, maybe this is him saying hello. We had never met before and being that I'm my father's only child not and it wasn't just uh, a sibling of my father's who passed away it was his twin brother so I thought maybe we have you know some sort of connection or or something I'm not really sure and after that I thought well maybe that was him telling me to look up into my rear view window or mirror sorry um to see the car that was coming from behind me because he had passed away in a car accident also. And I just wanted to see what you guys thought about that and if you maybe ever heard any other stories similar to that or having a connection to um, a family member, sibling who was a twin or something. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but I just wanted to call in and see what you guys thought. Um, I love your show, and my fiance got me hooked on it for about a year now, and as soon as I get home, I'm actually planning on signing up to be an EPP, and I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, thank you for the great show, and I look forward to hearing the rest of your stories and the stories on the EPP. So I think sometimes there's more at play than just simply a coincidence. I, I personally don't believe in coincidences. Mm -hmm. So I kind of wonder if that wasn't just kind of a count for you from her uncle. And then identifying himself yeah. as best he could. It's yeah. like, hey, there's so something, you know, help me out here in that, you know, what could have been a horrible situation. Who was it? You know, what was it? And then, oh, bam, look, there it is. Right. I agree. I think there's, you know, certainly something like that going on there. And, and we do get stories like that. I can't recall any specifically about twins, but certainly of deceased family members or mm -hmm. friends or something that the person who's affected by it never actually knew but kind of then connects those dots to it being some sort of a like a guardian of some sort sure so yeah we get those uh, all the time uh that may be the first one of a twin but i, I could be wrong i'm not sure but I it certainly that. happens mm -hmm. uh 855-853-4802 is the number to share your real ghost stories with us mitch hi oh i just left a message a little while ago but i think i took too long so i'm gonna make this quick uh, me and some friends there were six of us and we were in a car and we heard about this bridge that was a little bit like sketchy a little haunted maybe we were like okay let's go check it out so we drove about an hour to this random location and then he drive another 30 minutes on the dirt road and it, there is no street lights there is nothing out there and we're like okay that's fine, like whatever, we want to be freaked out a little bit, like let's see where this takes us. So we're out there and there's me and my buddy and we brought four girls with us and we were walking down and right when we got out of the car, just a weird vibe right away. Like, I, I don't know, I like, when I was going there, I've always seen stuff all my life. I have a ghost that I think follows me and I've always called it Sam since I was a little kid, but I didn't, I didn't know if I really believed in, like, a haunted bridge. For me, it was a little far out. So we get out of the car, and instantly, like, we all get the chills. Like, it's kind of creepy, and I start getting excited. I'm like, okay, like, I like seeing stuff like this. And I've kind of gotten used to it around my house and everything. And I'll call in with those stories some other time. But we're like, all right, so whatever. We start walking down. We get about halfway down. We have one flashlight with us, and the girl... Um, the two girls actually get a little too freaked out. They're like, you know what? No, we're done. We want to go back. 
we said, all right, like, no problem. We gave him the keys, and they asked us for the flashlight so they could walk up the hill. And so we were like, sure. So we gave him the flashlight, even though we were the ones still going to the bridge. We keep walking. We get down to, like, where the bridge starts, and we all stop. Like, I I could not make myself step on that bridge. Everyone was freaked out. It was a weird vibe. And um, so we're standing there, and you're supposed to hear, like, a drum beat and all this stuff. Like, that's what our friends told us. Like, we, they heard, like, a, someone, like, a drum beat or something. It was like, okay, whatever. So we kind of think we maybe start hearing something, and then it get, goes away. We ignore it. We're like, nothing's happening. But we're standing there still kind of, like, frozen, like, not knowing whether we should take a step or not. And um, no one is saying anything, really. We're just kind of standing there hoping to hear or see something. And all of a sudden on the bridge, I see it kind of looks as if someone threw dirt up in the air, shined a flashlight on it. I see this light shine, like it kind of looks like a light or something. And then it kind of starts to form. And as it's starting to form, my three friends at the same time all take off running. And we're all hooked arms. So it jerks me back. I'm kind of like a little whiplash. So I stop them. I grab them. I'm like, guys, guys, calm down. It's okay. What's going on? What's going on? What did you see? And I thought they were seeing the same thing I did and just got freaked out. But none of them had actually seen what I was seeing. And what had happened was we were standing there, and they saw a rock come from their side of the bridge, fly up, bounce twice, and hit my friend in the foot. And uh, so they're freaking out. We, were, Me and my buddy were kind of having a good time, but the girls, like one of them was shaking, or they were both shaking. One of them started to cry. We were like, okay, you know what? We've had a good night. Let's let's just go home. So we turn back to the car. We start walking back up. And we're kind of walking fast now because everyone, it's a little creepy having your back turned to the bridge. We're all a little freaked out. We're going up, and um, the girls that we gave the keys to are sitting on the side of the car. And the car is facing us up on the top of the hill. It's a full moon night. It's very bright. We can see pretty well. And you can see under the car like the horizon line, basically. And... Um, we see the girl sitting on the side of the car on the left side. And we're like, okay, why? Like, why? We don't know why anyone would sit on the side of the car, but we're like, whatever. We'll talk about it later after we feel secure when we get off this road because we didn't feel secure on the dirt road. I'm telling you, it's creepy. And um, so we're like, okay. So we go, and um, we're walking back up, and we start shining our phone lights on them because we're like, why would they be sitting on the side? They see us sitting on the side, and they get up, walk around the back of the car, up to the, the back door on the right side now, and um, the door opens, a light turns on in the car, and they wave at us. And we're like, okay, like well, that was a little weird. So we get in the car, and we start driving away, and once everyone's kind of feeling more comfortable, we're all calmed down, I decided I was going to ask them. I said, why are you guys sitting on the side of the car when we gave you the keys? And they go, we, we weren't sitting on the side of the car. And I was, and like, all of us were like, ha ha, like, shut up. Like, we knew they were trying to freak us out, right? The girl, one of them just, so you could tell, she gets a little teary-eyed, her voice gets shaky. Guys, we weren't sitting on the side of this car. I, I promise you, what did you see? What did you see? And we, all of us, the four of us walking up, we all got started to get freaked out. We're like, what the hell? Like, and then I was like, no, 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 guys, we saw you walk around the back of the car, and then you opened the door, the car and the light turned on, and you waved at us. Like, no, no, you're lying. She said, no, we saw you guys shine the light on us, and we didn't understand why all of you had your phone lights out, so we opened the door and waved at you to let you know that we were okay. And I guess it was coincidental with what we were seeing that it happened to look like it walked around and opened the door. And so we were like, okay, this is weird. But it was my friend's mom's car, and we drove on a dirt road, so we went to go get a car wash. While we were at the car wash, um, he gets out to put coins in the machine, and he gets he starts freaking out. He goes, guys, guys, you got to come look at this. The car's a mess because it's a pretty muddy night. you got to come look at this. you got to come look at this. And across the back of the car, there was – it looked like someone took their four fingers and just dragged them all the way across the car. And then there was a big hand, but bigger than any of our hands. We all put our hands up to it because it was we, it was just odd. Like the fingers on it were oddly big, and the palm was normal size though. And it, there was just a big handprint on the side of the car, 
and we were all just freaked out beyond belief and never figured out what any of it was, anything, but I'm talking about it now, still getting goosebumps remembering what that was like. All right, thanks. My name is Nick. I love your guys' show. You guys are awesome. Thank you, Nick, for sharing your experience with us. I think that's one of the best bridge stories we've ever had. Yeah. You know, because it wasn't just a, oh, we went out there, we heard a noise. No, stuff actually happened. They saw things that weren't there, and then they saw the after, you know, the the handprint, Mm -hmm. kind of the lingerings of something that happened. I think that's that's more than just one of those urban legend bridge stories. I mean, this was this is what starts those. That's so creepy just to the thought of, you know, you're at the car wash and then, oh my God, look at this. It's almost worse than like just seeing something. Yeah. Because it's like, oh my God, something was right there and we didn't even realize it mm-hmm. until afterwards. So now that, that you're exactly right. This is one of those that starts it uh-huh. where this guy's kids are going to end up having a version of the story <laughs> where it's like, no, this happened to me, really, you know, sure. and it's just going to keep going. It's like, no, really it was dad and then it'll be grandpa <laughs> and great grandpa, but that's, that's, that's how it'll go. Thank you for that story. We really do appreciate that let's go to uh dana in california hi hi tony and jenny my name's dana i'm from canada edmonton and i'm an epp i love your show and i thought i would um send an email a voice recording email with my story so my father passed away about eight years ago from cancer and it was in feb february that he passed away and um, in June, I, Father's Day was coming up quickly, fast approaching, and I thought that I had probably done enough grieving to be able to handle the day without a total breakdown or, you know, just all and out, out like grief again. So I went to sleep the night before Father's Day, reassuring myself that I would make it through. And that morning, uh, the sun rises at about 5 a.m. here in June. And I had what I would describe as a, as a very um, lucid dream. So I had the most dream. It was like a waking dream, though. It's like, it's like I was dreaming, but I was totally aware that I was dreaming at the time. I was in this amazing red gown, like a like a bell dress and it was this intense red color and I was walking kind of up the side of this sort of like grassy knoll and the grass was so green and the colors in the sky because in my dream the sun was just rising as well and so the sky was just was just all these intense colors of peach and yellow and red and orange and Colors like I'd never seen them before, and I've never seen anything like it. It was like the way people describe colors on like, on like acid or something. Um, but these colors were just amazing, and I was walking up this hill, and it was a warm, warm morning, and I just felt like, I don't know how to describe it, just a sense of peace, like love was all around me. And as I come up over this hill, I see off to the side of this sort of walking path road, I see this massive truck and attached to it is this trailer. Um, The strange thing about the truck is that it wasn't a truck like I'd ever seen before back then. Um, If I was to describe it now, I'd say the closest thing that I could possibly think of would sort of be like the, the Raptor, the Ford Raptor. It was very futuristic looking to me um, eight years ago. And as I approached the truck on the other side of the truck, there was someone standing there. And as I got closer, I realized that it was my father, only he was in his 30s, which was just a few years older than I actually was at the time. And I mean, I, I recognized him immediately, but I also recognized him from photos of seeing him holding me as as a baby, as a young child. And he was actually wearing like sort of those flared out kind of bell bottomy jeans that all the guys wore back in the late seventies and those sort of faded out, really faded blue cotton t-shirts. He had a full head of hair again um, and a, a 
beard that was red and not not white like when he passed away he just looked like he was 30 and he was in his prime and I said I said dad and he said yeah Dana it's me and I knew that he had passed away I knew that this was pretty remarkable so I said dad what are you what are you doing here and he said I wanted to see you on Father's Day and I said well well happy Father's Day and he said thank you and I said well how have you been and we literally had a whole conversation he told me that he had never been better and that um, he was great and I asked him what he was doing with this truck and if it was his truck he said yes it's my truck I'm just strapping it down I'm doing gonna go to do a bit of camping and a bit of hunting and it just really seemed like he was just living another life um, a lot like the life here only in spectacular vivid colors and peacefulness he also told me that he would wait for everybody and what I kind of got from that was that maybe we have a choice about reincarnation and by him telling me that he would wait for everybody means that he would wait for me, my brother, my mom, and just us to pass um, so we could all be together again before he chose to be reincarnated maybe? Not exactly sure, but sort of the sense I got. He also told me that everybody was there, and I mean everybody, and I said like everybody, and he said everybody. So that was pretty interesting too. Um, I asked him some more questions, but some of them he just told me he couldn't answer. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe it broke the rules if he did. But then he just went on to have a very casual conversation, and he told me he wanted to show me how to properly use tie-down straps because he said that I need to know this information. And I said, oh, Dad, like, you're here. This is amazing. I'm not going to spend the time with you talking about how to secure a load to the back of a truck with tie down straps and then I turned to look because the sun out of the corner of my eye I could see the sun just coming up over that grassy hill I just walked over and I wanted to watch the sunrise and I remember saying oh it's so beautiful and I turned back to look at my dad to see if he was looking at the sun and it was he was gone and the truck was gone and the trailer everything was gone and I was just I was alone and at that moment, I woke up, I realized that I was dreaming, but I also felt like I had just literally seen my father and it felt like I was just with him. And I had tears in my eyes and I woke up my husband and I said, you're not gonna believe it. I just, I had this most amazing vivid dream about my father. I think it might've been a visit and I was always kind of thinking to myself, like, my rational mind would say to me, you know, it's just your way of your mind coping with the grief, knowing that Father's Day was the next day, and this was like my chemical brain just conjuring up this amazing thing, like, just to keep me, you know, balanced and not go off the deep end, and I kind of wondered if it was that, but in my heart, I always kind of knew that it was a special visit from my father, and I always felt very, very grateful for that. But, I mean, there's always that shadow of a doubt, and I never really told a lot of people about it. Actually, I only ever told two, my husband and my mom, and they both thought it was a visit. And my mom cried, and she said, it's such a, an amazing gift that your father gave you by this, um, because the day that he passed, the night before, my brother and my, my uh, sister-in-law had visited him in the hospital. And if anyone's seen a loved one suffer through cancer, some of the end results, um, with all the pain medication they're on, they're, they're hardly there. I mean, there's a spark every once in a while, but for the most part, they're they're very, very just in and out of it. And a lot of times they're barely, like barely the person they are. Well, that night before, before I got there, my mom told me that I should have came the night before because your father was your father again. It was like, he was there, he was all there, he was up, he was, he was joking. And 
The morning that I arrived, I had planned to stay at the hospital in the hospice care until he actually passed because we were all told it was soon. So I had taken, I had cleared my schedule for however many weeks it took and everybody knew that I was just going to be at the hospital with my mother and, but the morning that I got there, he was unconscious again and my mom told me that I missed out on the night before and I felt really sad about that. I just, I just felt like it was just, it was just such a shame and he actually passed away that morning at around 10.30, so, I mean, <clears throat> it was, yeah, hard, hard for me to know that he was all there the night before, but the day that I came, he was back unconscious, and then he never, he never reawoke and just slip, slipped away, really. So my mom said for him to come and visit me and give me this closure was just a beautiful gift for him. So I still had a little bit of doubt in my mind, and I, I thought about it quite often, about, you know, once a month or so, I'd, I'd, I'd rethink about, about the visit and what we talked about and how great he looked and, and how it was just so cool the way it felt like he was just living a new life and being himself, but just in a different place and how beautiful that place was. And last year, um, I had a client, I, I own a small business and um, a, a client came in for a cons consultation for some services she wanted rendered. And everything was going just as normal, just as any other client. This is what I want. I gave her the quote, we talked about this, that, the other the timeline. And we were just finishing up. And she stops and she looks at me and she goes, I ha she's like, I don't know how exactly you will take this. I don't even know if I should say this to you because I don't know you, but... I have a message from your father. And I said, what? Now, just to back up a little bit, I had never met this woman before. And I don't have, I'm basically a ghost online. I don't have a Facebook page. Um, I have very little that reveals anything personal about my life on the internet. Because I run a business, I don't want to be tagged in photos or at a party and someone takes a bunch of pictures of me. I just, you never know, you know? So I basically am a ghost online. So I know for sure there is no way she did some back research and figured a bunch of stuff out about me. Not only that, but I have actually been married since my father passed. So I actually have a new last name. There's no way she would have known all that. So she tells me she has a message from my father. And I said, okay. And she said, when I pulled up in front of, in front of your shop, um, he was standing right next to my car, right beside me. And I said, I said R really? And she, go she goes, yes. She's like, I'm, I'm a medium, but I don't do it for work. She's like, I don't charge for my services. It's just, it's just a, a gift that I have. And she's like, Som sometimes when, when, when a when a when a past loved one approaches me and it's it's as strong as your father was, she's like, I just feel compelled to tell you. And I said, okay. And I said, well, what did he say? And she said, well, he was very gentle and a very quiet man, which is true. My father was an in introvert, a lot like me, very quiet, very passive. Um, she said, which was nice because a lot of them will give her bad headaches. But my father was very gentle on her, and he he kind of motioned to his chest and said, I I I passed away of cancer. And then she said that the way she communicates with them isn't really like through language, but it's more through like symbols and signs and certain words. And I don't know, she pieces it all together. And then she told me that my father wanted me to know that my new shop is amazing and that he's surprised at how big it is, which went to me because I had moved to a new larger shop and my business was growing and I grew out of my small shop and I moved to this new shop. So she knew that. and. She also told me that my father knows about the separation. I had actually separated from my husband about three months before she came in, and that my father wanted me to know that he's okay with the separation, and um, just basically gave me just saying hi, you know, and I'm, I'm proud of you. And 
I just stood there looking at her, just saying like, this is, this is unbelievable, like, that you can do, do this. And she said, but you know, she's like, I have to ask you something. She's like, I have a lot of people wanting to talk to you right now, a lot of past fa family members. She's like, but I'm just sort of blocking them out. I'm just focusing on your father. She's like, but one thing that keeps catching me off guard that I hear from other people saying, she's like, I have to ask you, have you ever had a near-death experience? And I said, no. And she's like, you've never just accidentally died a little bit? And I said, well, no, I think I would know if I accidentally died a tiny little bit. And she's like, well, did you ever go for any major surgery where you were put under? Or And I said, no. I said, well, I got my wisdom teeth pulled, but that one I was like just out of high school, but I mean, no. And she goes, well, she's like, they are saying that you've been to the other side, that you've, that you've crossed over, that you've seen it. And she goes, how, how have you been there if you haven't passed away and then, you know, were brought back? And I, I, said, I, I said, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. And she's like, well, they're all telling me that you've, you've actually crossed over. You've been there. And then it all came back to me about the dream. So... I told her about about the most vivid dream I ever had in that lucid dream with my father and the intense colors and how he was in his 30s and I, I retold her the whole story and she said I really think that your father instead of him visiting you he actually brought you over to visit him and I said how is that possible I said well when I when my soul was on the other side what was my body doing? Like, was I still breathing? And she says, I don't know. I can't answer those questions for you. She's like, but they're all saying that you've been there. And, and she said, I can actually feel your aura. And she's like, it feels like you've crossed over. And she said, have you been having like anything other than this dream? Has anything else ever happened to you since you, since this dream? And I said, well, yeah. I said, yes, a lot of things, a lot of really strange things that I've just sort of chalked up to, I don't know, the fact that I'm an artist, maybe I'm extra sensitive to these things. I had also joined a choir where, where we sang a bunch of really old, ancient, creepy songs, beautiful, but creepy, in Latin, which is a dead language, and I thought maybe that had been bringing stuff towards me. I wasn't exactly sure. And she goes, no, it's, I, I really believe that something was opened up, like a light was flicked on inside of you when, when your father brought you to the other side and then brought you back when you woke up. So anyways, that's my story about how I may or may not have died a little bit in my bed, went over to see my father and then got brought back um, somehow, some miraculous way. Um, I have some other stories that are really cool that have happened to me since. Um, I think she might be right. I think since that happened to me, there has been some really strange things and especially strange when I was in Mexico. But I will uh, make another voice recording and soon, and I will tell you all about that story as well. Thank you so much, and I hope to hear my story on your show. I think that's one of the most complete dream stories we've ever had as mm -hmm. far as getting a confirmation through something in the awake world Sure, that, that was more than just a dream. It's interesting to hear that uh, experience from the perspective of someone who just came up to them and said, I, I want to tell you this stuff mm -hmm. out of nowhere. Because I remember back when we started doing this show a couple of years ago, um, some of our regular uh, callers at the time, uh, Cisco, and there was another Mary, Mary. California. Yeah. Uh, were sharing their stories of being the people who would do that. Mm -hmm. They were like, I was in an airport and I just, I saw these people. I just, I don't know why, but I did. And I came up to these people and I told them a message. And just really interesting from that standpoint. And here's from the other person's standpoint, of course, it works out well when you have two people who are open to it. Yes. You know, it could go horribly wrong had, you know, uh, they had not been the open person she is to that. But uh, it, it's interesting to hear it uh, sold from that perspective. Mm -hmm. And it really sounds like it does connect a lot of dots for her. It does. And I think it's great in the fact that, you know, yes, the dream kind of gave her some closure and that she felt like she 
was able to talk to her dad that one last time but mm -hmm. then this was like confirmation that that was real that that wasn't just in your mind that sure. that, that was something else because you really you could construe it the other way you could question it and you probably would until you get some sort of confirmation it sounds like she got it there yeah so thank you for sharing that uh, that story with us we greatly appreciate you uh, sending that in let's go to another caller hi hi my name is cindy uh, i am a new listener i just recently discovered your guys' podcast and i love it it is awesome um i have lots of stories i can share with you as i grew up in a house that was uh, that had a lot of activity and my whole family experienced it but what's the story i'm going to share with you first is a story that came from my younger sister's best friend's father don who's a very really cool guy but he does not fabricate stories and um, it was hard to even get the story out of him because he doesn't like really telling it but it's a good one so the story goes um, long time ago uh, don lived with his wife um, Lizette and when Justine who's my sister's best friend um, was a little little baby that's when this happened they were living in an apartment comp complex so one night um, he kind of dozed off I guess while watching TV and his uh, Justine when she was a baby he was she was a baby was in between um, him and Lizette on the bed so all three of them were on the bed so he said that he had dozed off and then um, he woke up and there was a guy standing right above him, looking him straight in the eyes with what he called a joker face. Um, he was smiling from ear to ear. So of course he thinks, well crap, somebody is in my house. And he goes to swing to hit this guy and the guy just disappears. Um, he just hits the air. And um, so he sits up and straight ahead, from the bed, bed uh, from his bed, he said, uh, was the bathroom, and he and the guy was in the bathroom, looking around the corner. That all you could see is his head, peeking around the corner, looking at him, once again with a smile, a creepy big Joker face smile from ear to ear. And so Don gets up. He's just livid at this point, and he runs to the bathroom to go, you know, pommel this guy who's in his house or in his apartment and he runs into the bathroom and nobody's in there now this bathroom um, doesn't even have a window so the only way in or out is the door and the guy's gone so of course don who's actually a police officer um he just grabs his wife and kid justine and they leave the house that very night and he had he just had no explanation he knew he wasn't uh, seeing things, he knew he wasn't dreaming, um, so he just had no explanation as far as this person, you know, who this person was and how they just disappear. Um, he said that after they had moved out, like they never returned, they moved out right away, but after they had moved out, he had heard from other people living in the air and the same complex that they had experienced similar and had seen this Joker face person in their house as well. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, that was fun sharing you the story, and I will be calling you again and sharing with you my stories and my experience and my sister's experiences, too. They're kind of scary, but I think kind of cool. Paranormal doesn't really uh, make me afraid, at least not anymore. I'm actually more curious about it, and um, any time I have experiences, I kind of explore it. Um, I'm just not afraid. Anyways, thank you so much. Keep it up and don't ever stop this podcast. It is awesome. Talk to you later. Bye. Gonna bust those stupid clowns, <laughs> as Harper would say. Yeah. Oh, man. And then to find out that other people in your same apartment complex had the same experience, <sighs> that's... Ugh. Yeah, it's not what I think you want to have. No. It's it's funny with uh I don't I I wonder where this all goes back to with the you know the clown joker type, you know, face thing that people get freaked out by. Mm -hmm. what, does that all originate from it or did people have, you know, horrible fear of clowns far before that? I, like I, where does I, this stem? I think it predates it. Sure. But I think it really made it worse. Yeah. I, yeah. Anyway.
Good story. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. 855-853-4802. Hi. Let's hear yours. Hi, Tony. Hi, Jenny. This is R in Kentucky, and that's all I'm going to go by. Um, I was just listening to Window Crashes on Women from September 11th, 2014. So you can tell I'm a while back in the podcast. Um, I've actually been kind of going uh, backward and <laughs> where I've been listening to it anyway. Um, it reminded me of... Um, Something that happened to me when I was about 12 or 13, I was um, visiting my aunt in California and I dreamt that I was on an airplane and um, it was hurtling toward the ground, um, you know, it, and, you know, spinning sort of like it was very out of control. Um, things were flying around, people were clutching each other and screaming. Um, Oxygen masks were had come down, and um, I felt like my stomach was in my throat. I really felt like I was dropping through the air. Um, it was it was terrible. And I woke up, and uh, my aunt she watched the news um, all morning long. She always watched the stock market, and she told me about this horrible airplane crash that had taken place at the same time that um, I had been asleep and um, I just started crying because I felt like I had been right there with those people um, and could have just been a big coincidence but um, like Jenny and Sherlock Holmes I don't believe in coincidence so um, I don't know it might have been some kind of astral projection um, I'm not sure but uh, it was uh, pretty odd and so I just uh, I passed it along because that uh, reminded me of that. And I look forward to becoming an EPP in the next couple of days. I'm really, really looking forward to being some those really crazy ghost stories. And so um, thanks. Love your show. Y'all take care. Um, love and blessings. I don't think it's the same story, but we've had one very similar. And I don't remember the circumstances or what the tragedy was within it, but it was dreaming about being part of that ongoing tragedy when you wake up and find out it really happened mm -hmm. and it just makes you wonder if there's not like just a mass influx of emotion you know, emotion that might be something that they're picking up on i, I could see i mean it, it, it would make sense for that kind of the empathic thing mm -hmm. you know even in an unconscious state where that could occur and some folks have the ability some folks don't have the ability yeah. I, I think that makes sense. It's a really interesting way of, of looking at that. Thank you for uh, for sharing that story with us and uh, or that question with us. And thank you for uh, also uh, becoming an EPP. We greatly appreciate that. It's always fun when you get a call uh, talking about something that was discussed like two or three years ago. Because mm -hmm. it's like, wow, I kind of remember talking about that. <laughs> it's so <laughs> far back. So thank you for that. Uh, of course, uh, if you are an EPP, you get to access to all of our bonus episodes uh, almost a hundred of them now. And then access also to our way, way, way back archive. The stuff that's fallen off of iTunes. We have that uh, posted up on the EPP website as well. So you get to uh, download all those original episodes too. So check that out. Uh, ghostpodcast.com is a place to become an EPP and help keep us on the air and uh, get uh, freaked out with all those great stories. That wraps up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. Until next time, for Jenny Bruski, I'm Tony Bruski. Thanks for listening to another episode of Real Ghost Stories Online.